And I, as I told you, uh, this is not level 10. This is level 10 and nine and one half. So that should be just in the middle. Uh, we can uh, do some math and we can divide this by two. And here we will have a weird number or uh, we can work uh, with these uh, auxiliary lines. And if we go from uh, one level to the other one, and then I click here on the midpoint. Okay, so now I'm sure that this is in the midpoint and I only have to move this level up. There you go. Okay, so this is at the uh, level five feet and five inches. I think it rounds up because uh, it will be five feet, four inches and, and something. So it runs up to this. But now I make sure that this is at the, in the middle. Uh, we have made a small mistake, as you can see with this, but we can fix it easily because this is uh, editable. Okay, so we've, uh, we select this solid that we have created with the uh, architecture uh, component model in place. And the only thing we have to do is to use these arrows and then we, we can adapt these to, <clears throat> uh, to the new profile. Yeah, but now this auxiliary line will start here and this one will start there. Okay. And now can we go, well, if we don't have a, um, a snap point here because we don't have uh, this snap so I, I, I don't feel that uh, in, at this point I'm doing this so I can uh, easily delete all these uh, reference lines that I did okay and now I can create another one here and just I can I can copy all these. Oh, the, the first one is wrong too. Okay, so I can select this, copy, and now I have this snap point, and now I'm sure that this is the this is what I want to do. Yeah, I can uh, copy multiple, and then I can select all these intersection points. And now select the solid and I do find that I can just drag this arrow to this uh, green line and I find this snap option so I don't have to. So immediately you find that it's working. Okay. So this is what I, <clears throat> Uh, I found out that uh, this was not accurate and then I stopped recording because I wanted to fix this before showing you how to uh, work with other uh, other ways to, to create uh, staircases. Uh, so we have that solid element here. <clears throat> and now in, on the video, I showed you, uh, I'm going to close this one. I showed you how to create uh, staircases, but that they are not solid. And uh, before moving on, I want to show you different examples, okay? So Google uh, staircases and try to be creative and to do something new. And uh, I don't know what you want to do. So I'm, I'm showing you different options, but it doesn't mean that this is the right option. Do you want a staircase like this? Okay, we can do that. Uh, do you want uh, staircases like that, uh, in which we don't have the the the, the rising? So we have this is the. Uh, it looks like a light structure that the steps are floating. That's nice. But you see that we have a structural element here. So this black element is painted in black because uh, the architect or the designer or whoever. Uh, this, uh, they don't want to see the structural element. Okay, so uh, we have like a black 
or a dark gray uh, wall. And then you use the same color for the structural element because you want to convey the idea that the steps are floating. Okay, so depending on, on what you want, uh, you can try different, uh, different staircases. Uh, in this staircase, we don't even have a structural element here. So this is an overhang. Uh, this is uh, risky because uh, yeah, we don't have a handrail, so it's very it's quite dangerous. So I wouldn't do that. Anyway, there are uh, different options for the handrails for the. But if you see, we always have a structural elements. So those are the structural elements. Instead of having one in the middle, uh, we have two here, and uh, and then we have the steps. But try to, uh, yes, yeah, so I, I like this. This is like floating, but we have these, those are those cables are holding the steps. Okay, so everything is thin. It, it looks like it's floating. And this is at the same time, this is a structural element for the steps. And it's like a handrail because that prevents you from falling as well. Okay, so. <clears throat> Um, try to be creative and try to do something on your own. So don't use a uh, Revit staircase. Uh, I'm going to do something like that now, okay? So I'm going to create the steps and I'm going to create the structural element here. So let's do this. Uh, so in this, this first uh, flight of stairs, it's a solid. And that means that it is solid. Uh, this is the kitchen. So you can make the most of it, uh, creating like a locker room or a storage or something. You can accumulate things uh, that you will need in the kitchen under uh, the steps. You can do that. Uh, but now as of this point, I want, to, uh, I want to do something like this. I want the steps and then I want the structural element in the middle. Okay, so in this front view, uh, remember that uh, I'm working in this uh, plane, so I have to set the reference plane because this is the plane that I created. So everything that I'm drawing, it will be on that plane. And uh, I can create a component, modeling place, stairs. And I'm going to create extrusion. Uh, so I'm creating that step. It's uh, two feet, two feet, uh, two inches. So I create this rectangle. I finish. And then on the 3D view, well, this is the 3D view. I can go to the top view. And then I can extend this uh, here and there. Okay, so now this step is uh, floating and then I can copy the rest. So I have created this uh, line. Now this is correct because this uh, it's in the middle, the landing it's uh, just in the middle. And then I can copy all these multiple on these points. And now we have this nice thing here. But this is not, uh, the steps are floating. So we need something structural to hold uh, the steps. By the way, uh, if you see uh, now we have the landing, but we need to create a, another landing. So or we want to continue this landing. But if we continue this in this direction, we continue the landing and the steps. Mm, well, maybe something interesting or maybe not, uh, but I'm going, to uh, create a, another landing so I can create struct, uh, architecture, modeling place, stairs. And I'm going to create extrusion, a rectangle. And I'm going just to create this landing. Mm -hmm. 
and on the 3D view, top view. I select this and I drag this way. So now I have the <clears throat> uh, two solid landings and then we start uh, with the steps. But I told you that we need an structural element for those steps. So let's do it. And we can uh, create again another uh, component uh, modeling place. Uh, this is the stairs element. And uh, okay, we need something here holding this, holding all the, those uh, steps and resting on this landing. Uh, so I can create an element by extrusion and we can start here. And then, I don't know, there are different ways to do this. So let's... <coughs> trace the steps okay and now we go up and you see that revit is intelligent enough because he Revit understands that you want to, to do a parallel line. So even you don't have the you don't have that line. Well, you do have the line because it's the green one. So when it's parallel, uh, you understand that you can do this. And then you can do this up to this point and then go up. Finish this model. And then on the top view, uh, this has to be in the middle of uh, these steps here. Okay, so now you have this structural element. The same thing uh, we have here. Okay, so I'm showing you different ways to create uh, stairs without using the stair tool. Uh, we will use this next week, uh, but when we have constraints and in this project, as you can see, we have constraints because we have this limited space to, uh, to create the staircase. Um, using the, the default stair tools, uh, it will be more difficult than doing this on your own. Okay, you you, you only need to know what you want, and then you, you can you can do it. And please do not uh, do not hesitate in copying things. So there are a lot of uh, cool uh, designs that people, other people, other architects, other designers. Uh, have already invented so let's copy something that works and then we will have time to create our own uh, staircase or our own elements that if we find something that we like just copy it <clears throat> um, okay so now we have to do uh, this is the first the first floor to the second floor now we have to create stairs from the second floor to the third floor. And then we're going to create, uh, when you are using the stair tools, you have the uh, handrails, but they are all ugly. So we will create our own handrail as well today. Uh, so the option what I started explaining on that video was the option of uh, using roofs by extrusion. Okay, so we're going to create a stair with the roof tool. It, it might sound uh, crazy, but I think it's, uh, it's an interesting approach to, to do this. Uh, as we have the same height, uh, we can extend uh, these uh, reference lines up to this floor. I think this is the, the first thing we have to do. Uh, so if we select one of the lines, here you have the, the extend multiple element. 
multiple elements too. So we click here and we have to extend this up to this floor. And then we can just uh, select all these lines. And we go up. So now we have the reference lines here. And the only need we in, we need now is the, the level of the landing. So again, this is 21 uh, full, 21 feet, seven inches. This is 10, full, 10 feet, nine and a half inch. So the most reliable way to do that is to create this line. And then from this midpoint, uh, or uh, sorry, copy this. <coughs> to this midpoint. And now this, uh, we, we made sure that this level is the where the landing uh, should be. And now we can trace uh, or we can copy. Okay, let's copy these two diagonal lines here. Okay. So this is where our steps uh, will be. And now I can use this uh, option of uh, roof by extrusion. Okay, it's not roof by footprint, it's a uh, roof by extrusion. A uh, level not relevant because we're going to decide. And now we're going to uh, draw the, the steps. So the first step is here. So we draw that step. Oh, first and foremost, sorry, uh, let's cancel. <clears throat> uh, because we are uh, selecting roof by extrusion. Okay, that uh, this is a, uh, well, this roof is to, I, I want to create a, a roof, a two inch roof made of wood. Okay, so the steps are going to be, to be made of wood and the thickness is gonna be two inches. Uh, so that's why when I select this roof, this generic roof, I have to edit type. I have to duplicate, and this is a two inch uh, wood roof. I edit uh, this type, and then the structure, I can select here, materials, let's say what kind of wood uh, Revit has. And we have oak, plywood, sash, softwood, and let's say oak, cherry, oak. And this is two inches. The thickness is two inches. Uh, we click okay. And now we have this uh, roof, a two inch wood roof. And now we can start drawing this. And I can draw this uh, using these reference lines. And I'm going to create even the landing. Now I click OK. And I have this. Okay, so I have a roof uh, with this shape. Great. Uh, the problem is that, uh, well, where is it? It's, it's here. So I need to adjust uh, these. Here. Okay, so that's a different way uh, to do the steps. So first we can have the uh, solid steps. Uh, we can have these uh, floating steps, or we can have these uh, created out of a roof. Okay, so there are, there are different options. And I don't know uh, all, but we need to know, uh, I have taken this idea of one of these, uh, where was it? Yeah, this one, okay? So as you can see here, we have the element. So I have taken that idea from that staircase. Uh, 
and now we need the uh, we can create another roof uh, by extrusion and then I can start defining the other one. There you go. Oh, but I, I have made a mistake because I want to create landing as well. There you go. Okay. And now I have to adjust this. There you go. <clears throat> um, so be creative and uh, copy the uh, staircases that you like and try different things. I mean, I have tried three different ways to create staircases here. And usually we don't do this when we are designing houses. Uh, we don't have three different uh, type of, of staircases that you can you can I don't know you can you can do whatever you, you feel like. <clears throat> uh, now we don't have a handrail. So this is uh, this can be nice, but here if you fall, you don't have a handrail here. Mm, okay, so let's uh, create a handrail uh, using uh, different. Uh, so let's try uh, the roof. I, I like this uh, roof by extrusion thing. Uh, so I can uh, start here. The handrail is always like three uh, feet. Okay, so the height of the handrail is three feet. And then uh, since you have that line, you can go parallel to that line. And then we can go down. Click OK. And we have created this. Uh, where is it? Yep. Uh, go to the top view. And now this handrail it's something that starts here and it can, it's something very thin actually. So it can be something like that. And we have a handrail in this position. Okay, if we go to the front view again, uh, I can do the same, uh, another roof by extrusion. From this point, go three feet up. Three. And then go parallel to this. Right to this point here and now go down. Uh, yeah, now we have to fix this from the top. Okay, so now we have uh, handrails. Uh, this is uh, this handrail is not 
well, it's uh, actually it's uh, dangerous. Um, but if I want to, because I can go, especially kids, kids are terrible, and you always have to be careful with them uh, because kids can fall. Uh, so we have to close these. We can close these with uh, glass, for example. And now I'm not uh, going to use the uh, the roof. I'm going to create another component, modeling place. And here we have the uh, railings. Okay, so I can select uh, railings, uh, terminations, for example. And uh, I can create extrusion. And I can trace this up to this point. And then here. I click OK. And now in this view, <clears throat> this is like a glass that is here. Okay, so this is a glass element here. That is inside the, the handrail. And can we assign this uh, a material? I think we can. Okay, I'll show you this. Uh, other day, well, it can be glass or it can be any other uh, opaque material. But uh, the good thing is that in components, uh, we can assign materials so that we can have transparency or we can, yeah, we can do. The best way is to override the graphics in view. And here we can assign transparency. And if it's something transparent, it will be glass. Uh, how can we see this? Uh, well, I'm going to need an inside view, I think the section. Okay, if we will, if we work with transparency here. Okay, so this is uh, transparent now. This is the wood. Terrible texture, uh, but this is transparent. And uh, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Uh, so this is up to you. Be creative and try to try to copy or try to imitate something that you like, and yeah. and it's a challenge. Every time you you want to do something on your own, uh, you have to think of uh, you have to think how to do it, and then you will get to know to learn uh, Revit. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, we are done with uh, stairs. Uh, next week, probably we will have something different with stairs, but today I want to finalize the, the modeling of this house. And I will open a classwork uh, so that you will have to submit this complete model, this complete 3D model, including everything we are going to see today. Um, when we are done with the staircase, I don't know, but uh, these green lines are bothering me. So you can either uh, delete them, or if you think that you are going to need those lines uh, afterwards, uh, we can select all of them. And we can uh, hiding view elements. Okay. So the lines will be there. If you click here on this uh, tiny light bulb, reveal hidden elements. Okay, the lines will be there. 
but they are hidden. So I think this is uh, better. Well, we have more lines here. Well, now I'm deleting this line because I, I don't think I would use it again, but this is up. Well, no, I don't want to delete this. Okay. But this is up to you. If you want to delete lines or you want to keep them hidden, uh, this is uh, up to you. Okay, uh, the plans are quite easy. So if you uh, we want to trace the things that we have here, uh, then we will insert some furniture, but now we want to just uh, trace the, the walls. And as you can see, we have walls here limiting the staircase. Uh, we have walls here, this is the restroom. Here we have a locker and this is interesting. This is something that we would need. This is a shaft. A shaft is something that goes from uh, first floor to the top and this is connected uh, usually with the uh, with the kitchen okay so we, when we have the the cooker uh, we need to extract the smoke and that's why we need those those shafts anyway uh, let's do this here we have different thickness and we have to find out uh, this okay this is four inches and this is eight inches Great. Uh, so we can work with walls. This is an eight inch wall, which is this one. Uh, make sure that this is wall center line and you are selecting the this center line here. Okay, so we have this wall. Uh, where is that wall? The top constraint is uh, unconnected. So we want to connect this to level 10. We want to start at level zero and top constraint up to level 10. Okay. Now uh, we have to select a four inch wall. Do we have four inch walls? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, okay, so I'm going to, maybe you have these walls by default, but if you don't, uh, just uh, change this. Well, first duplicate four inch wall and let's make it four inches and now make sure that you select always the the axis and then we can go down Uh, there is a sliding door here, so we will insert this sliding door uh, afterwards. And now there is another wall here, starting from this point and here. And now we can trim because those walls are not connected, but we can trim this and this, and now they are uh, both connected. Uh, we continue with this four inch wall. This is the four inch wall here. And uh, here we can trace this, then this, and finally this one. Okay. Uh, drag this and make sure that, uh, because if you finish your wall here, Mm, there might be like, a, okay, so this is the wall. Sometimes uh, you don't finalize the wall uh, properly, so don't hesitate to go further and make sure that this connection is well done. Okay, here probably is happening the same, so make sure that we have this connection. And uh, I didn't check the height. Okay, so we have an unconnected height here, and this is what I have done. Uh, so I want to uh, create that wall from the first floor to the second floor. And now I have created these walls here. Okay, so I can select these two walls and I can attach and I can select the first floor 
the second floor slab, sorry. And now they are attached there. And I can do the same with these. One, two, three, and four. Attach here. There you go. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, this is attached here. Uh, this is the elevator, and this is not attached. This wall here, attach here. Yeah. Uh, so this is it. Uh, and we are repeating this in all the floors. So this is level zero and level two and level three, they are the, the same. So we can trace on level 10, uh, we can trace the same walls. The wall in this case starts at level 10 and uh, this is uh, unconnected. Uh, let's go up to level 21. And have this, this, then this one, and here this wall will be the eight inch wall. And here we will have the same. So four inches. Here. And here. Now I'm sure that the heights are not uh, correct. Well, it's not bad. But if we select all these walls and attach them to this slab, that's better. And I think we have to do the same with this. Attach here. Okay. So we are tracing and finally uh, in, that, in the last uh, floor, um, yeah, we need the same because we have the elevator and we have to go all the way up and then we have the shaft. Okay, so let's do it again on level 21. Uh, I can try the 3D view. from this front view. So I can try to select all the walls here. And then can I move them or copy? A remove constraint. And then we have from this level to that level. It doesn't work well because the, the height is not the same. So I have to select all the walls again, attach to top base here. Now it works. Okay, uh, let me look at the plan view. Level 10. In level 21. Okay, uh, on level zero, we can always uh, select this and hide in view. I don't think we need this anymore. 
uh, the thing is that we have to do the same on level 22, I do, 21. Okay, and this is what I want to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the wall and this is the slab. Yep, there is something that I don't like here. Uh, we have this wall and this is the floor. This is the, and this is the wall. So there's a tiny space here uh, that I don't like. So I'm going to edit the boundary of this floor. And then I'm going to align this and this. Okay, I click okay. And I'm going to do the same with this. I edit boundary, align this and that. Touch. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so now all these elements are aligned and we don't have this tiny space here between the wall and the, and the floor. And okay. Well, as you can see here, I have not created the, the wall around the, the staircase. So this is what I have to do now. But I don't need to trace it uh, because I know where this wall uh, should be. So I can uh, work with wall, this four inch. And uh, I can try, okay, so it doesn't have even to be because I can use a line. I know that this line has to go here, this line there, and this line there. And then this line here. Okay, so this is the wall that goes up to level five. Yep. And it has to go attach to this. Okay, so now the, um, the staircase is not visible because we have this wall. Um, that um, this is our decision. I can have a staircase like this in this floor. Uh, and we can see that staircase. Uh, when it comes to safety, it's gonna be challenging, but uh, well, it's, a, it's our decision, as I told you. But here uh, we need a handrail, okay? So I'm going to leave this stair visible and I'm going to, <clears throat> on this third floor, when we arrive, at the third floor, uh, we need a handrail. So I'm going to do that on level, we start on level 21 and it goes uh, the top constraint. Is level 21 and uh, I want the top offset of three feet. Okay, so let me do it and then we'll find out if it's uh, right or wrong. Now I can align.
Uh, well, I want to do this, but in a different, uh, oh, it's three inches. It has to be three feet. Yeah. And this one has to be three feet. Okay, so now we don't fall because we and we arrived at this level and then we have a handrail all around this. The only dangerous point now is this staircase here, but we will figure out how to solve it. Okay, uh, so we are done with the stairs, we are done with the walls. What's next? Uh, we need windows. Uh, if we go to level zero, uh, where do we have the windows? I'm going to uh, select uh, the drawing and I'm going to unhide in view. Okay, so I have this. So the windows, uh, we have this huge window here and this window there. Okay. What kind of windows do we have? Uh, architecture window. Oh, we only have this fixed one. In the template that I have uploaded in Canvas, uh, you have different windows and I'm going to insert a few of them. If we find libraries, this imperial windows. Let's try to select something that it's not horrendous. Uh, well, this can be a window casement multi sash horizontal. Okay. Uh, what else? Oof. The skylight. And this one. Okay, so we'll get by with these uh, two options. I want to insert a window, <coughs> uh, this one, but uh, how big is it? <laughs> It's not that big. Uh, so we're going to edit this type uh, to make this window as big as we need. So we need to annotate. This is 17 feet, 10 and a half each. Okay. So I'm going to select this window Oh, the height. Uh, what is the height in this 3D view? I'm going to uh, create an opening from the floor to the ceiling. And I have to find out this dimension. This is the ceiling. This is the floor, so it's nine feet, six inches. Okay, so it's nine feet, six inches, and the width is 16, 10 and a half. Uh, so let's open that window, edit type, duplicate, and this is 10, no, it's 16. Uh, ten and a half inches, sixteen feet, ten and a half inches by 
uh, I think it was nine and six inches, nine feet, six inches. Okay. And now the width is uh, 17 feet, 10.5. And the height is nine, six. Okay. Yeah, looks well. So I place it here. And now I need to see what I have done on the 3D view. Okay, yeah. Uh, what's the issue? The sill height. The sill is the distance between the floor and the, and I want this to be zero. Okay. So I have a nice opening from the living room to the garden. There is another one here, uh, this one, uh, if we annotate. Ten, two and a half. Okay, I'm going to use the other uh, window, the fixed. Uh, I'm going to edit, duplicate, and this is, uh, I'm going to create a square one. So it's nine feet, six inches by nine feet, six inches. Okay, uh, this, um, this, hmm? Oh, I didn't change the height, is nine feet, six inches, and the width, nine and six inches. Apply, okay, there you go. It's slightly smaller than the original one, but uh, I think it goes well. Great. Now on the 3D, yeah. I have to make the seal zero. Okay. So this house is, uh, well, this project is uh, a friend of mine and I think I'm going, I'm going to help her uh, make it better because I think uh, she copied, we, we always copy, okay? So this is, uh, I, I mean, this is a real house. This is a real project. And um, well, they have decided that they want a house like this, but I think it would be better if we had, uh, I'm going to edit the boundary of this floor because I think I can improve uh, this house. And why? Because it reminds me of, uh, Casa Plegano. Casa Plegano. There you go. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, the, the architect that was designing the, the house we are doing now, uh, she wanted to, to copy uh, this and maybe she did, or maybe she didn't know that she was copying this house. Uh, by the way, this house is uh, one of my teachers. Roberto. Campo Baeza. Okay, yeah. Well, I remember that that was the, when I was uh, 18 and I started my, the, the architecture program at the architecture school in Madrid. Uh, this was the first project that uh, 
yeah, uh, they gave me this project, the plans, and we had to start drawing. We didn't have Revit, we, we had to do this by hand. And this was the first project that I, I, <laughs> I learned uh, when I was a student. And actually, uh, it's cool. I like the skylight, so I think I'm going to copy uh, the skylight. And I think I'm going to copy this. Well, this is uh, Alberto Campo. Is uh, he was my teacher, and uh, he is. Uh, I mean, he's into the minimalist architecture. What is this? Minimalist architecture. Okay, minimalist architecture is something like that. Uh, we need few elements uh, to create something, okay? So everything is straight. Uh, we have two materials, the concrete, the glass. Um, so this is minimalist architecture. I'm not into this uh, minimalist architecture. But uh, well, that, it's an option. So if you have clients who like these pure volumes without any decoration, just uh, planes, light, the contrast between light and shadow, okay, uh, this is uh, this is an option. And this guy, Alberto Campo, my teacher, uh, he was into this kind of uh, of architecture, and he became famous doing this. Mm. Well, it's interesting, especially uh, how he plays with uh, light shadows. Okay, so let's uh, try to do this. Let's try to improve the original house and let's try to do something like that. So the first thing is that uh, I think this uh, would be more interesting if we extend this uh, slab up to this point. So let's do this. So I'm going to edit boundary. And I'm going to go to the top view. And I'm going to start here. And now I'm going to use trim. The trim and trim. And we delete this one. Okay, so we have created this floor. There you go. Yeah, I think from the spatial point of view, and uh, now this is more interesting because we have this looking at this living room and we have this floor looking at this one. Yeah, so I think this is uh, better now but we need uh, something like a handrail here because otherwise we will fall. Okay, so on that uh, level 10, that now we have here. So we need a handrail in this direction. So we can create a wall. The wall goes from level 10 up to level 10 as well, but the, the offset is three. So we start here, go, well, I'll do this and then I will align everything. And now I'm using align and trim. Okay, nice. You see that we have a handrail here, so we don't fall. Um, uh, but I think now we need a window. We need a big window here. And this is what we have in the model. 
Okay, so this is the handrail, and then this is this part, and then we have a window, a nice window there. Okay, let's do it. I think I can insert the same window, the nine feet and six inches, and okay, I can insert this window here. And now I will align this here and here. And finally, I think we need another window there. So I'm going to insert same one. Uh, here and now I'm going to align you go okay and I like the idea of the skylight. So let's try to work uh, with a skylight uh, here. Window, skylight. Uh, okay, I'm going to edit type because I want to skylight duplicate. And this is five by three. Let's make it five by five. Feet, five, five feet. And the width is five and the height is five as well. Okay, and now I'm going to align. This. And I think I'm going to copy the skylight. And now I'm going to copy both of them. Here. Okay. Okay. I think we are done with the model. And uh, now we have to make the most of this model. And then we have to take uh, a couple of uh, good screenshots. And how can we do that? Well, I think this space is, uh, the space that we have here is interesting. So if we place a camera, okay, so this is the, now we can uh, hide in view. If we place a camera in this, I think the best option, we click camera. If we place the camera here and we look at this. Mm, well, not bad. What if we cast shadows? Okay.
well, that feeling that the space is, we have uh, windows here, then we have another window there, another window there, then we have the skylight. Yeah, I think that works. Uh, but the view is like too, Yeah, so this window is not, doesn't look like a square window and it should be, okay? So we can have this. And there's something that I don't like, is the, the light. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do uh, something that might be interesting. So let's go to level zero. Uh, uh, hidden. And let's select this uh, sun path on. So this is the sun path. <clears throat> okay, this house is meant to be, so uh, this is north and this is south. So in the northern hemisphere, so we are working, I think by default, uh, if we manage uh, location by default, we have Boston, okay, that's fine. Uh, so when we are uh, working with uh, projects like this, these big openings have be to be, uh, they have to be facing south, okay? So it doesn't make any sense that these openings are facing north because we what we want is uh, the sunlight going through these projects. If we look at the original project by this guy, this is the south elevation. So we have these openings here. And what is the north elevation? This is the north elevation. Okay, so in the north elevation, basically we don't have any openings. That makes sense in the northern hemisphere because we, we want to make the most of the uh, southern uh, light. Uh, but if you can see now in our uh, drawing, uh, the big openings are facing north. So we can either rotate the house or even more interesting, we can rotate the north. So I'm going to show you how to do this because what I want is to have the sun entering the house. Now it enter, the sun enters through the skylight, but not through these walls. Okay, so I need to place the sun here and I need to uh, see how the sun rays are entering the building and are casting shadows on the walls. This is what I want, okay? And I'm not happy with this view because this is not happening now. So the sun is coming from this place and it should come from, from this place. So I need to change the south and I can do that. Uh, first, I have to activate this uh, sun path on, okay? So we see the sun path and now we uh, understand where the north, south, east and west are. Um, okay, I mean this element in project location. Okay, so here in project location, we see that we can relocate the project or we can rotate the true north. This is what we're going to do. But first on these properties windows, we need the, okay, so this is the project north, but we need the true north. Okay, so in these properties windows, we select true north. And now here we rotate uh, true north. So basically we're going to uh, switch this where the north is going to be here and the south is going to be there. So let's rotate true north. Uh, we can place the center of rotation. So I will place the center of, ro of uh, rotation here on that point. And what do I want now? This is the north. So I want to rotate so that the north is here now. Well, as you can see, uh, I have rotated the house, but if I change here the project north, now the house is in the original position and this is south and this is north. What happens if I look at the 3D view? Uh, it doesn't happen here because this is uh, something that I don't understand in Revit. If you change the north, it happens only in this view where you have started, but uh, not in that view that you already have. Okay, so we are, we are going to delete this and we are going to place uh, another uh, camera 
here uh, camera I want to look at this in this direction I'm going to extend this view and I'm going to cast shadows what the hell sun path on okay and in this sun path, sun settings, I'm going to select a single day or even better still, time 23, 24, no, apply. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so this is what I wanted to see. Let's see in the morning. Okay, yes, this is it. Uh, what have I done now? I'm going to, to explain it. Uh, this is what I wanted. I want the sunlight entering uh, from this uh, facade. So that's why I have rotated the uh, north. So now this is south and this is north. And this is the sun path. Okay, so we know that the sun is, sun rises in the east, in theory, and sets in the west, in theory. Um, but it's always moving in the south. So it's casting shadows in the south uh, facade, not in the north. Um, and here we can change the, the date. Uh, so if this is uh, March, I can change this. And you see how the sun path is changing and I can change the hour. Okay, so it's 11 and we move the sun. I think 10 will work better. Uh, so now if I open the 3D view, I can do the same by controlling the sun settings. If I select uh, still, then uh, I can select, this is uh, March the 11th today, and the time is uh, 10, 24. I can say it's 10 and apply, and you see how the light is moving. Okay, so when we have this uh, sun settings, if I change the time and apply, I see how the light is moving. Mm, I don't like this because I want to cast the shadows on this wall. So the morning light will be better. Yeah, I like this better. Okay, and then if you uh, select uh, Ambient shadows. Yeah, that always looks better. Okay, so it's not, it's not just uh, having a good model. Uh, we need to select the the right uh, light uh, because the, the this picture changes dramatically uh, with this light or or with the sun in a in a different position. Anyway, I'm not happy with this uh, view because it's like distorted. Uh, this doesn't look like uh, a square and it's a square skylight. So what can we do? Uh, okay, I'm going to show you another way to do that. Uh, well, first, uh, uh, we can duplicate views, so we can say this, but in this 3D view, we have 3D view 1. What is 3D view 1? This one? Oh, so that one, that was the one with, uh, okay, I'm going to delete this. And then we have 3D view 2, this perspective. It's not bad, but I think it can be better. So I'm going to duplicate this view, the uh, 3D and I'm going to uh, duplicate view. And then I can rename it. What name do you want? I don't know, 3D view 3, something original. 
Uh, so I have this 3D and this 3D view uh, three. Uh, I don't want to see levels in this 3D view. So I'm going to hide these levels because, and I don't want to see these uh, auxiliary lines. I'm going to get rid of them. I just want to see the model. Okay. But I want a section and I want a perspective. How can I do that? Uh, you can work with this section box. Okay, so in this property is Windows, you can uh, select section box and we have this element, which is a box and I can edit. And if I drag this section box here, I have a section. Okay. And if I have the left, the left view, I have a section like this. But if I go to, if I right click here, so uh, you uh, hover your mouse here, right click, and then you can select perspective. Okay, so if you select perspective, you do have a nice uh, perspective view like this. Uh, if this is hidden, hidden line, oh. To activate shadows, uh, we can have any transparency. And now we can cast shadows. We can select some settings. Still, uh, it was uh, 10 a.m. Apply, yeah, that's it. And now, uh, what can we do? We can always show ambient shadows. And uh, I think we will understand better the space <clears throat> if we had uh, black uh, lines where the section is. Can we do that? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, we can go to visibility graphics. And what are we looking at here? We have floors, roofs, and walls. Okay, so if we select uh, the walls, the cut pattern, and we make it, uh, well, first it has to be solid and black. This is the same with walls. Uh, we need to do the same with roofs, cut patterns, override, uh, background solid, and color black. Okay. And finally, we have walls, roofs, and floors. So in the floor, we have override, solid, and black. We apply. Okay, I think this looks better because we understand the space in this house and we understand where the section is. And we can change the view. Okay, we have this one and we have uh, that one. What do you think? Yeah, I think I like this one more than this. Anyway, um, you can you can try. Are you following me? Am I going too fast? Uh, do you like this, or do you think that this is terrible and you don't like this uh, kind of views, or I don't know? 
uh, can you give me any comments? Yeah, I think the view is really cool. Okay. I like it. Um, I like it too, and it's it's very simple. And believe me, it's not the model; it's light. Okay, so uh, if we had this uh, without uh, lights, it's not. Uh, especially if we don't have even the 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 ambient light or the ambient shadow. It's like uh, well, mm, but if we do have this. much better and now you have to find uh, your your way to express i mean the model is important but uh, there are things that are important too like the lights where we place the windows uh, what colors we use uh, do we use uh, this black line here or we don't uh, the kind of view that i'm selecting is uh, relevant as well because i can uh, select this one so we, we need to understand our project and we need to understand the weakness and uh, the strengths and the weaknesses of, of our project. Uh, I can do the same with the section box. And I can have another section box like this. Or no, not like this, uh, like this. Okay, so I can do the same. I can uh, place it here. I can hide levels. I can make it perspective. And I can use the, the same wire, no, not wire frame, sorry. Hidden, graphic display, not transparent. I can cast shadows. Well, maybe it's not bad. We always need to have a section uh, showing the, the stairs. So that's, uh, yeah, why not? It's, uh, it's fine. And then we can do the same, the, the override graphics. Uh, we can use the walls, uh, black, well, first solid, and then black, the roofs, solid, and black, and finally the floors. Solid, black. Okay, it's not bad. But uh, this view is better than this one. I don't know why, but uh, I mean, this is more interesting because here we have this uh, triple volume and here we see that the, like, I think we understand the house better with this view than with that view. Okay, it's not bad, but uh, I don't know. This is better. Okay, so we need to understand our project and we need to select the right view. Uh, if we have a good project, but we don't select the right view, mm, there's something there's something wrong with it. Um, and even if we have a bad project, but we select the best view, it will, it will work. Uh, I don't know how to explain that. Uh, but it's about uh, knowing your project and sometimes you don't know, but you try different views, you try different perspectives, different sections, and you say, oh, that's the that's the, the right one. And then try to work with light. Uh, working with light is impossible and cast the light or, or the shadows uh, on, 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 on a wall, okay? Because if we don't see a wall, uh, we don't see the, the these light effects that we have in, in, in this, in this project. Okay, uh, so let's go back to the orthographic perspective. Um, 
I think I have shown you a lot of things. Uh, we can uh, model the building, and then once the building is modeled, uh, we can try to work with this section box, or we can work with cameras. I think cameras are better for open spaces. Uh, if we want to take a perspective of uh, from outside, I think a camera is a good option. Okay, but if we want to create perspectives uh, with this section and the perspective, I think the the, the section box is a uh, is a better option. And for sure, copy. Okay, um, all these examples are uh, made with uh, Revit. Mm, the more complex is the project, the more beautiful the, the view will be, but uh, just try to copy, take ideas from, uh, you can use materials as well. Mm, but I think this section perspective it works well because it explains the building uh, quite good. But then you have to be, you have to select your, what you like. Maybe you like this more than black and white thing. I don't mind. Yeah, this is beautiful and the other one is beautiful. But uh, you have to find what you want to do and then do it. This is, all these pictures are uh, created with, uh, with Revit. I don't like this. And when in doubt, I would use the black and white. Uh, is better. This is better than uh, using ugly materials. And the problem with Revit is that if you create the realistic view, um, in graphic, we need to go to lighting. The ambient light has to be in probably the shadows. Okay, so make the ambient light uh, brighter and the shadows lighter and well it's getting better but be careful with the Revit default uh, textures because they can spoil the a good drawing 